Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elena if you're new here. Nope, nope, it's so hard. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elena and today we're doing three projects using air dry clay. I specifically use Crayola, but there are tons of different brands. I haven't used air dry clay since I was in high school and it was so much more cool now that I'm an adult, I guess, but it was so fun. And recently I've been super obsessed with like natural textures and specifically terracotta and incorporating those into my home. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, I love clay and I just can't express how much love I have for terracotta and for stone and concrete and all those natural elements. And I just love that it's a trend that we incorporate them into our house and not just on our porches and patios. But it really does just totally make your space something completely different when you add in things that are meant to be outside in, especially living in the Midwest, maybe that's what it is. We don't get to be outside all year. So when we can have these outdoor things inside, it's just like, yes, you know? Who would have thought putting a face on a pot would be so transformative in a subtle way? You know what I mean? Well, I also tried my hand at speckle painting for the first time, which didn't go great. But I learned a lot and I'm excited to use it in future projects. So also these knots that you're seeing everywhere, they are amazing. They're super expensive, like well over a hundred dollars, some of them. And they're made out of stone or concrete or something like that. But this is a great dupe for that. I really love how they turned out. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get into the projects. Why am I holding chapstick? For this first project, all you will need is some air dry clay. I'm using Crayola white air dry clay, and I find that it's super easy to work with. Take a nice fist size amount of your clay and start kneading it with your hands. Once it's soft enough to work with, go ahead and start rolling it out on your work surface into a nice long rope, about a quarter to a half inch thick. Once your rope is rolled out, you're going to take your piece and make this upside down U shape. And we're going to use this to tie our knot. So taking the loop, crossing it over your double rope and slipping the loop through the hole. Just a simple knot. Go ahead and start adjusting to make it look like you wish. I took some water and started to run water along all of the clay to smooth out any uneven surfaces or cracks that were forming until I was happy with the final product. I took my knife and just cut off the ends so that they were nice and clean and neat. And that is all. I just let it sit for about two days to harden. This is what I did with it. For this next project, you will need air dry clay. Again, I used white, a toothbrush, and a couple of colors of acrylic paint. Here I have pictured brown and terracotta, but I ended up using brown and black. So begin by taking a large chunk of your clay and just kneading it with your hands to get it soft and pliable. And you're gonna wanna separate that into three even chunks of clay. Roll each of your sections of clay out into ropes, probably about 3 fourths inch thick, so that they're all nice and even. I'm going to take a toothpick and just begin scoring the top side of each of your ropes. Once you have scored each of your ropes, you're going to be making these into circles to eventually stack. So 
So you can score the ends of your ropes. Apply a little bit of water and attach the ends together to make this circle form. Using your fingers and a little bit of water to smooth out the seam where you connected your circles. Apply a little bit of water on top of the circle that you just made as well as on the scoring of your second rope. And again, attach the two ends together of your second rope and then stack it on top of your first ring. I'm going to continue the same process with your third ring until you have three rings stacked on top of each other. Once you have your three rings stacked, you can take some water and with your fingers just start to smooth out those seams a little bit more, making sure that they're completely adhered to one another. I let this dry for two days. It was almost completely dry before I started painting it, but because I was going to be speckle painting it, I wasn't too concerned that it wasn't fully dry. So with your acrylic paint, just dipping your toothbrush in and gently pulling back on the bristles so that the paint flicks on to your clay, giving that nice pottery speckle effect. I actually think I did it too much. I went overboard and I'm not in love with how it turned out. So if I did this again, I would remind myself that less is more. Halfway through the project, I decided I didn't want to do a clay bottom because I just thought it would be too heavy and too chunky. I ended up taking some of this cork sheet from the Dollar Tree, tracing around my pot and cutting that out to be the bottom. And because this is a sticky back sheet, I actually did two and stuck the two circles together. see my hot glue gun in the background there. I originally tried to glue these down to my pot, but apparently hot glue does not stick to clay. So I ended up using super glue and that worked great. I ended up using this as a Q-tip holder in my bathroom and I really love it. For our last project, you will need a jar or vase of some sort. I ended up using an old mason jar and air dry clay. This time I used the terracotta color. I took a very large chunk and rolled it out into this nice flat disc about a fourth of an inch thick. I placed my mason jar down on the clay and gently started rolling the clay around my mason jar until it was completely covered. From here, you'll want to trim off the excess clay where it starts to overlap each other because we want a nice, smooth, even surface. And 
you'll be left with a nice long rectangle shape. Once all of your excess clay has been trimmed off, you can roll up your clay around your vase and use your fingers to adhere the two edges together. And then I don't show this, but I ended up taking some water to smooth my finger over that seam to make it look as seamless as possible. Next, it's time to make the face for our pot. So I started by rolling out a long, thin rope. That will be the nose. Rolling two small balls to be the nostrils. And the top of that long, thin rope that we rolled out will be the eyebrow, so I curved it. I took a short rope and just folded that in half to make the lips, squeezing the ends up in a smile shape. For the eye, I took two long, thin ropes, connected them and squeezed the ends together and just trimmed off any excess. Rolling one last small ball for the center of the eye and just squishing it down. To apply all the features to your pot, take your toothpick and score the back of each of the features. And then score on your pot where you plan to apply that. Dab it with a little bit of water, both the pot and your feature, and press it on. Continue that same process for all of your features. I actually didn't score the back of the nose and eyebrow because it was so thin and that ended up falling off and I had to super glue it back on. So I definitely recommend scoring every piece. Because I could see the clear jar inside of my clay pot, I wanted to kind of blend that in with the rest of the pot. So I painted it with a terracotta acrylic paint and I absolutely love how this turned out and I think it is so cute. Mm -hmm. 